I'm going to argue the case for tooth-supported fixed bridge work, and I'm going to do it quite briefly, and I hope that I'm going to do it quite uh, succinctly. We are all in the same business, uh, whether it be uh, Ian Needleman, Graham Bailey, myself, all of you, what we're interested in is trying to maintain a dentition over an entire lifespan. What we can say at this point, because the evidence keeps on rolling in, that subject to good periodontal health and subject to good pulpal health, what drives the survival of the natural tooth will be the quantity and the location of the remaining tooth structure. That is evidence to us all. Now, of course, I've offended one of the chairs this afternoon, and I probably will offend the other chair, in fact, the, de the chair of the whole conference, Shaquille. And Shaquille was very rude to me just before I started this afternoon. So in a minute, I'm going to nip down there, and I'm going to punch him in the mouth. <laughs> now, I'm pretty good at doing this, because people in audiences have been rude to me quite a lot over the years, and I can do this, and I'm going to avulse his maxillary right central incisor clean. And because I know Shaquille's pretty good and pretty sharp and is also a dentist, I'm rushing outside with it and the tooth is going straight down the drain. <laughs> now, <coughs> the rest of you better be careful because I am quite good at this one way and another and you could suffer the same fate. But I am prepared to consider at this point that if the same were to happen to me, once I'd sued the individual, the choice of my treatment would be that, that, and then that. That's the way it would go, wouldn't it? Implant first. If you can't have that for some reason, the tooth-supported fixed prosthesis, where somebody doesn't cut your teeth very much. And third place would be the one where you get your teeth heavily prepared. 